There we go. There's Patrick. Yeah, there I am. Yeah, hey. Hey. <laughs> so I guess we just have the wrong or the the older version link for the Zoom meeting. Okay. Well, well, Patrick, I don't know if you if um if you uh, have uh, I don't know exactly how it's going to work when you share. I'm hoping when it shares, all of these all of these uh, all these tiles are going to go off to the side someplace, and we're going to get. We're going to be able to have a, a big picture of you uh, at that okay. time. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so hopefully that's what will happen. But um, Matt, so, yes. I, if you put it into gallery view in the upper right hand corner of your screen, um, the speaker becomes large and everybody else's little tiles on the right hand side. And, and that's, okay. a, that's something that each of us would have to do. Yeah, there is there's speaker oh, okay. view and gallery view. So you want to click on the speaker view to see uh, Patrick in full screen. Yeah, cool. Yeah, nice. Okay, so so f uh, f folks that that don't have a video um, feed, I don't know what to tell you as where to find that, but it should either be at the upper left hand corner, upper right hand corner, or or lower left um, somewhere. It should be there. So look for speaker view. It's a it's a um it's got three dots above a, a a box um so that you'd be able to see that um i'm going to get started right now we're, we're, get, we're getting a little bit of a late start and um and uh i, I don't uh, i won't spend any other time except introducing uh, patrick i'll spend a little bit of time introducing patrick and we'll get going so of course we're pleased to, to host a, a live stream presentation by guild member and compagnon poisson charpentier du devoir I don't nice. know if I said that right, Patrick yeah. Moore, no. <laughs> <laughs> founder, founder of the uh, professional school of uh, practical stereotomy. And I think I'm saying stereotomy, right? But I'm yeah. not certain. That's right. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, so Patrick specializes in historical and uh, traditional carpentry practices and has worked around the world on national and international federally classified historical sites including two UNESCO World Heritage Sites. In 2013, he became the first person from the Western Hemisphere to uh, receive, here I go again, Compagnon Poisson Champentier du Droit in uh, France. And he has multiple exhibitions on display in museums around the world and is the founder of, of the school, uh, Professional School of Practical Stereotomy, which is a small private professional school unique, unique in the uh, English speaking mm -hmm. world where students are given the experience in the UNESCO classified knowledge of practical stereotomy. And I want to say that uh, you guys are in for a treat because uh, this is really, really fun and interesting stuff. Um, so uh, without any further ado, Patrick, everybody wow. put yourselves in, in mute. And um, oh, one other thing I will say, if you do have questions for, for Patrick, um, Patrick, do you want them to hold them? To, uh, we can do it as we go. That's no okay. Problem. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I mean, at least it's fresh for people. Okay. So, so if you do have questions, please, um, please uh, unmute yourselves and and then ask the questions. But then remember to, to mute yourselves when you when when uh, when you're finished asking your questions. Okay. Thank yeah. you, Patrick. Well, thank you very much. Wonderful intro. Thank you so much. All right. Great. So. Um, uh, I think what I'm going to try to do is share a share the screen here with everybody, and I'm going to show um, just a task sheet. So the the goal of what I'm going to show today is um, a little paper model. So we're going to be building uh, an irregular pitched uh, pyramid. Um, so with four pitches of that pyramid being unequal pitches or different slopes, um, and then we're going to create elevation views of all the rafters or, or the roof surfaces, and then uh, elevation views of the hips. And then from there, we're gonna create a net view where we're then gonna be able to cut out this piece of paper to fold out. Um, I hope you guys can't hear that. That's <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. Yep. It's the way life is, Patrick. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry yeah. about it. <laughs> yeah. So there, share a screen. So there it is. Uh, I think everybody can see that. 
Yes. Yeah. Good. Okay. So um, this is the uh, so what I have this so th these are the task sheets that I've that that we use um, you know as practice essentially, um, and this this is some of the models that that's found in um, stage one of the online courses. Um, and so this is, um, they call them a, a record projects and a record in French is kind of an intersection of two planes or, or just an intersection of two, two pieces essentially. Um, and this is a second record project um, where we can see here uh, close up with the roof pitch, we have uh, three different roof pitches in percentages. So we don't, in, uh, in metric, we use percentages or um, degrees. Uh, the percentage is very similar to the imperial method, which is whatever, you know, 12 units of run over for so many units of rise. Um, where in this case with percentages, it's always over, it's over a hundred. So when it's a hundred percent, it's a hundred over a hundred. So it's pretty easy, it's 45 degrees. Um, and so you can see that I, uh, the fourth, there's not a fourth roof pitch uh, indicated because as we go through the process, we're going to figure out what's the fourth one. So um, what's given here is a perspective view of this kind of irregular shaped pyramid. And then right below it here is a plan view. So looking at, at this pyramid um, directly uh, like a bird's eye view. And so we could see, oh, let me zoom in here. Zoom, zoom. So there it is a little better. So you can see here that square is the plan view. So I'm looking at my pyramid from a bird's eye view directly from above. And so there's measurements that we can respect. So five meters by five meters um, and with a scale. So anyway, so I'm gonna draw this out um, starting from the plan view and then, and, then with, with, and then working with what I know. So I know these roof pitches. And so for example, AB here, um, a, B, and, and so looking at my plan view, you can see the corner A to B. So that line here is essentially what would we consider it as a top plate or a wall plate. And so that arrow where my hand is, is 100%. Um, and then the, one, the roof opposing that, so roof C, D, is 150%. Okay, so I'm just going to basically start start right away working on that. So if you guys you guys can take those take this information down as notes or whatever. And I think Mac, you're recording it, so at least people can have a copy of this too. Well, they can view it on YouTube. It's it's like three million megabytes or something. So oh, okay, <laughs> it's huge, right. huge file. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so based on all that information, what I just kind of introduced, I'm going to basically flip the camera down and we're going to look at, at, at the drawing and I'm going to start with the plan view and then work away from those two elevation views. Okay. So, so there we are. So there's my working surface. Um, I've shown, I've shown previously in a, in another video, just quickly how I can make parallel lines. Um, and 90 degree lines. And so uh, the, in, the two instruments that I use or the two tools I, that we use is essential, a simple drafting square. So in this case, it's a 14 inch uh, drafting square and uh, a long plastic clear ruler. So this is uh, 75 centimeters. Um, so the first, the first task I'll do is I'll make that square on plan view, uh, respecting the, you know, the dimensions approximately. And by doing so, you'll see how I use my two instruments to make parallels in 90 degrees. So the first, my first step here is I'll make my line. Okay. And then along that line, I'll, I'll mark out, um, you know, the, the size of the square. David, would you please mute your, your um, force? We've, we've got you guys showing up for some reason. So, um, so I just basically give myself a mark here on the, on, on the left side. Um, there you go. 
on the left side um, and then measured over my five meters. It should be, I don't know why it's blurring out on everyone. There it is, yeah. So then I measured over my five meters. Um, and of course it's scaled, there's a scale that was given there. Um, so in this case, I measure over 15 centimeters. So then from these two points, I'm gonna put a 90 degree up, 90 degree line here, just gonna make this box. And so um, to make a 90 degree line, it's pretty easy with your, with your instruments. So I'm just gonna do that. I just do have to do that once in a while. It seems to keep it in focus. Um, so I can pl I place my triangle. Come on. There it is. So I place my triangle on my line and I bump up my ruler to my triangle lightly, like so. And then I can rotate my triangle like this. Um, and then I can, and then the hypotenuse of that triangle is now 90. So through that point, I make my 90 degree line. Any degree line. So there's my two points, my two lines. Um, and then I'm just going to measure up another 15 and a perpendicular or parallel across. Yeah. And then a parallel from my baseline here. There you go. So there's my square. Um, you can always just double check the corners. You know, you measure from corner to corner and corner to corner, making sure it's the, they're the same. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and label my corners so I can respect, so I can follow the uh, the roof picture. So that was A, B, C, D. So there it is. So A, B, C, D. And so. I'm just looking at my task sheet. So AB, so that here, this AB line is 100 degrees. So I have a pitch up here. So I have a roof slope coming like this, or a plane essentially. And so I'm going to make um, what would be considered an elevation view of that roof pitch. And so I'm essentially just going to extend this AB line over to the left side a little bit. And I'm going to create a right angle triangle. Oops. And that right angle triangle is the elevation view of that roof surface. I just to extend that over a little bit. And then I'm going to give myself a 90 degree line off of that one. Um, and so this secondary line that I just drew um, is going to be considered or what we consider as a neutral plane. And it gets a fancy N, where you can kind of make it just N for neutral. Um, and so um, I'm gonna flip this camera back up and I'll explain. So a neutral plane, uh, when I create, um, let's say, like if I wanna create a, it's kind of blurry on you. Let's see if I can focus on that. Anyways, yeah, there it is. So uh, the idea of a neutral plane is, I'm gonna draw the gable end roof here. It's, like, it's a super simple. The, the, the neutral, neutral plane would be uh, essentially like a laser level. Like if, if people work with laser levels before, you turn it on, you make it a horizontal plane. Well, that laser plane is a neutral, is a neutral surface. Um, and, and it's neutral because it touches all of your roof components. So all your rafters, all your hips, everything all at once. And so on your kind of gable end roof, this would be a rafter here, and that would be a rafter here. And then this line here would be considered your neutral plane. Um, and it's just a horizontal line looking on elevation view. But on plan view, so when I look at it with my eye, um, from a bird's eye view, looking directly from above, that neutral plane is, is everywhere, like, uh, like you would like that laser surface. So I, you can essentially take that laser surface, if you had some dust in your hands, clap your hands, and you can see that whole surface. So when you look at it from a bird's eye view, it's everywhere. When you look at it on, on, a, on an elevation, all it is is a little line. And so, so that's the notion of a neutral plane.
So I'm going to flip the camera back down and I'll, and I'll continue with that drawing. Um, Patrick, the, the, um, the uh, lines that you drew as they got closer to the top where there was some light reflecting, they were dip more difficult to see, so it might thicken those lines. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Okay. Yeah, there wasn't any, there was any, there was no lines uh, really uh, important. I just drew an, an eyeball from a bird's eye view. Um, so look, going back to my drawing here, uh, this is my neutral line here. Um, this, this line was just extended from my AB. And so what interests me the most is this intersection right there. So that's AB line extended out to the neutral line here. And so from that point, I'm going to spring, I'm going to create a, a, a my roof pitch. And so my roof pitch is, uh, is 45 degrees. So I can, I'm going to measure over, uh, or it's hundred percent. So I'm going to measure over hundred along this line and then hundred up from that point. And starting from that intersection here. So there's 10. Make a perpendicular and then I'll measure up 10 here. And I've came my point right here. So I can go ahead and reconnect this point down to my starting point down here. And then that will give me um, the roof surface or the pitch of the roof. Just like that. So this angle in here is 45 degrees or it's a hundred percent. So, um, and that brings then, a, and this point here is AB. So that's my, this point is my AB top plate, which is shown here on plan view, which is there on elevation. So now that I have my AB elevation view in, I'm going to go ahead and turn our attention to the CD. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to extend the CD line out to the neutral line, get a point here, and then I'm going to spring up that roof surface. There. Um, CD uh, roof is 150%. So starting from that point, I'm going to measure over 100 and then up 150. So 10. And then there's my, so I'm going to measure up along this line, 150. Oops, not long enough. I'll have to extend that just a little bit. There. So 150, right there. So I got my point. So I'm going to connect that point down to the, my starting one. And that will give me... The opposing roof surface. So just like that. There it is. So you can see this kind of this gable end roof here and you can see how it's lopsided. This does not fall into the center or the center span because of course it has two different pitches. Um, so from this point I'm going to take this this intersection of where the two roof surfaces meet and I'm just going to draw a line down on plan view as if uh, there was a ridge. So you could picture that this is a gable end roof, while the ridge would be located uh, approximately here on plan view. So that's bringing this point down onto plan view. I'm not gonna draw the whole entire line, but I'm just gonna draw a little line in the center somewhere, just like that. So that line stems from that intersection. Um, the next, so I have my, my gate, my A, B, C, D, uh, top plate elevation views here. So roof, there's C, D. Uh, and I'm gonna turn our attention over to the next one that I have, which is B, D. 
So BD is here, BDD. I'm gonna extend my BD line and then make uh, the elevation up here. So BD is 106%. So I'm gonna create my neutral line, which is perpendicular to my BD line. So there's my neutral line. Uh, BD is 106%, so I'm gonna measure over 100 units and then measure up 106. And then measure up one hundred and six. So, right there. So, there's my peak of that. So, I'm going to go ahead and connect that back down to here, and that will give me that roof surface or the pitch of the roof anyways. Okay, so there it is. So that, as a repeat, that angle in here is 106%. So um, looking at the task sheet again, I, have, I didn't give the fourth, um, the fourth roof surface because I know the height of this ridge on plan view. So that, ridge comes from, that stems from the two intersections of my two roof slopes that I know. So if I take the height of that ridge and I transfer it over onto this elevation view, my BD, I'll get a point where that ridge or essentially that known height intersects that this roof surface. And then I'm going to connect that point down to my AC line. And then that will give me that missing roof surface. Because we're creating a pyramid, all roof surfaces have to meet at the same peak at, your, at the center, or not necessarily the center, but all at the same moment. So um, I'm gonna go and grab um, a story pole. So, <sighs> So there's a, uh, a good little, uh, kind of a good little trick with the story poles. You can just use drywallers tape. So it's just, you know, roll a drywallers tape, but you can just take any length you want, rip it. Um, and then I can use this as to transfer lengths. So I don't have to measure anything. I don't have to take a compass. It's really just a really fast and easy way to get to transfer stuff. So I'm gonna go from my neutral plane up to that peak Take that distance, transfer it from my neutral plane here, uh, and intersect it with that roof surface. Like that. So that's the height of my of my ridge, and transfer it over to here. Just like that. So there it is, very faintly, but there's my point. So then I can take a a level line. So just extend that point level parallel with my neutral plane until it reaches the roof surface. Right there. There. So I've obtained uh, this intersection right there. So that intersect section is also this intersection. So I'm going to go ahead and connect this point down to my AC top plate, which is right there. So there's my missing roofs pitch. So I don't know, of course, without me trying to you know, measure things, I don't know what that angle is. And to be honest and frank about it, I, I really don't care. Because if I wanted to transfer this angle, I would just take a T-bevel and take that angle with a T-bevel and I can transfer it onto a rafter. So I don't need to know what, I don't need to know what any of these angles are really, I just take a T-bevel. So there's, that's a bit of the advantage. Um, so now that I have that point, so essentially where those two roof pitches meet as well, I'm going to take this point and transfer it down onto plan view and intersect it with this point. 
And then that's going to give me the dead center, the peak of my irregular pitched pyramid. Okay. The kind of the one of the uh, one of the it just um, I might be going a little quick for some, but it's essential just to practice these things. So you know I'm, I'm transferring this, moving over here, and then connecting that down to my AC top plate. You know um, I might be losing a lot of people, but it's just practice that you, you know, by doing it and forcing yourself that you eventually you'll start understanding kind of the, the gists of it. So but anyway, so here's the peak. So that peak has a known height. That known height here at this point is this and also that. And also if I go ahead and I connect the peak to the corners, that will give me my hips located on plan view. So I'll go ahead and do that. There's one hip. There's the other. And you can see how uh, you can't just join corner to corner. I can't just go to B to C. It's just not going to work. It's uh, everything's irregular. The beauty of doing kind of doing it this in this fashion, that is drawing it out is that regardless of the roof pitches, you'll always obtain the answers. So that's, uh, that's kind of the nice thing. So, so having something irregular or regular, it makes, there's no added difficulty or complexity. Okay, so you can see now my A, B, C, D pyramid, and you can see how it's, it's all, it's shifted, the center is offset. Um, so the next step that I'm going to do is I have, I'm going to go ahead and create elevation views of each one of these individual hips to obtain the real length of the hip. So the, the line length or the length that goes from D to my peak up here in space and C up to space, A up to space, and then B up to here. Um, and then I'm going to take all that information and create the net. So um, I'm going to first start with my hip a to the peak. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and label this peak as um, X. Just to make it easier for everyone. X, X, X. So AX, I'm going to create that elevation view. So I'm going to take a parallel for my AX on plan view, bring it out to here. That's going to become my neutral plane. There's my neutral plane, which is again parallel from AX. And then I'm going to take these two points, my point A, bring that up onto the neutral, onto the neutral line. And my point X, I'm going to create a big line up here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. So from my point A, there's A. And somewhere along this line is the height of X. So earlier I, I figured that out with my story pole. So there it is there. So from my neutral plane to point X, which was used here as well. Neutral plane to X. And then I'm going to use that on here as well. So there's my point X. So then I can go ahead and connect my X to A, and that will give me kind of the theoretical or the true length of that hip. There it is. And so by drawing that out, I've obtained you know, two bits of it, or three pieces of, it, of crucial information, uh, one of which is the new or the a level cut. So between my neutral plane and the hip, that angle here is the level uh, between the perpendicular 
and that and the hip here that's plumb so i grained my neutral uh, my level cut my plumb cut and my so so currently my length of the hip okay so i did ax i'm going to go ahead and repeat that process through bx dx and cx So I'm doing DX. So I brought my point D up to my neutral line, point X. Big line. And along that line, I'm going to plug in what's the height of X. I think it's just off. No, you can see it there. So. Right, right off, just close to the screen there, there is X right there. If I just rotate that a little bit. There it is. So now I'm gonna go ahead and connect X to D. There it is. And so again, I've created, I've, I've gained the neutral or the uh, level cut plumb cut and the real length of my hip for DX. Okay. I'm going to do next is CX. So parallel from my hip on plan view or your piece on plan view, whatever that is. Go here. Neutral plane. To my point X, vertical, point C, just the point on the neutral plane. Again, along that vertical, I'll apply the known height from the neutral plane up to the peak, X. And then I'll go ahead and connect X to C. creating, um, gaining the plumb level and real length of CX. So I'm, do, I'm doing this really quickly and with a huge fat Sharpie. Um, if you when doing this precisely, of course, you want a, a very nice, fine mechan or like 0.3 millimeter mechanical pencil or uh, 0.3 uh, markers. Uh, they just don't show up on, on the drawing you know, with, for in this case. So that's why I'm using this big fat marker. And then the last one is DX. Let's see if I can do DX here. You already have DX, Patrick, I think. DX, I don't, oh, I do, excuse me. Thank you so much. Yeah, you know, someone's, at least someone's paying attention. Jeez. <laughs> cool, thanks. I'll do, the, yeah, it's BX I don't have. Um, point B on the neutral line, and then X. Let's extend that a little bit. There. And again, uh, my known height from the neutral plane up to X. There it is there. So there's D and X. There it is. So then again, I obtained Level cut, plumb cut, uh, and real length from B to X. All right. Um, the next step 
after this is to do the net. So I'm just gonna stop it here for a second. If anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to fire my way. And then, yeah, I'm just gonna grab another sheet of paper. Uh, so then I'll, we'll do the net on that sheet. Does anybody have a, a question for um, Patrick at this stage? All right. Yeah, so. Uh, all right, I'll just keep going then. Okay, so. Got a new sheet. And then with this sheet, I'm going to draw the net. So it's going to be my. Um, my pyramid and then I'm about to re hole. All right. So I'll, I'll fold the camera back down. Okay, there it is. Um, so what we want to do, so I'm going to use a, a compass just to gain um, you know, certain lengths and, and that's just going to be able to, what I'm going to do with my compass is just take certain lengths and transfer it onto this sheet. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, on my blank sheet here, I'm just going to give myself a line and then that's going to be the length of my top plate along that line. There it is. So the length of my top plate, so looking on plan view, I'm just gonna go ahead and start with AC, for example. So I'm just gonna plug in A, this is between A to C and transfer it over onto here. There's a million ways of doing it. Uh, I'm just gonna use the, the infamous story pole. There to there, and that's uh, top plate length, TP. Right. And I go ahead and put along this line. Okay, so following suit with that would be my point A here, and that would be my point C. So uh, the, the intent with this, or the goal is to recreate what's the actual surface area of A, C, X, back down to A. So that's this triangle. That triangle, of course, isn't flat, it's inclined. So I know the real length of A to X and X to C. So if I could take those two lengths and arc them off of my A and C point, I'm gonna recreate the actual triangle here that's represented on plan view here. So that's where the compass, I'm gonna take the length of AX, which is found here. AX and then mark and then just arc from A. Just like that. And then uh, the next one is CX. So looking for my hip CX, which is here. CX, there. I'm gonna have mark it from C. And so then where those two arcs met, that's my point X. X. So then I can go ahead and connect X to A, X to C. And by doing this, um, you gain another couple bits of, inf of useful information. Um, let me just draw this in. You gain the actual surface area of that roof. 
And so if you wanted to, I mean, I'm, I'm saying this with a, take it with a grain of salt a little bit, but if I want to calculate how much plywood I needed or bundles of shingles or whatever, there's the actual surface area that I can create. That, that. Um, and the other couple of good things that I can, that I've gotten are, if I had a purlin or something, like there's quick angles to find in here. So there's a purlin angle here and here. But another interesting thing would be if you had um, jack rafters. Let's say if I had jack rafters from my top plate to one, any one of those hips, if I just draw a perpendicular line here, the angle that's found between this, which let's say could be a rafter, and A, right there, that's the alignment cut, or that's kind of the cheek cut that sits against this hip. So if I had that rafter extend down to the plan view, so this angle here on plan view, that angle there, is this angle. This one's being the real angle, and that one's being that angle represented on plan view when it's inclined. And so there's a quick way of figuring out, uh, you could just take, um, uh, you take that ang this angle here on plan view and set it onto your circular saw. And you can cut following your plumb cut of your jack rafter and, and it'll automatically give you the real angle. So Patrick, the, the plan view on the, on the roof plane is your layout angle. And the, 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 the angle on your plan view is your saw angle, right? That's right, exactly, yep. So your angle here is your saw angle and that one is your actual angle. Yeah. So, so that's one thing that, another thing you can get is if, if I was to lay off, lay out my rafters, 16 inches or two feet or whatever on centers, I gain the real lengths of every one of those rafters as well. So I can go ahead and draw in all my little rafters. So I got real lengths of those rafters plus the real angle. So if I, if I use a combination of, um, of this angle, and my plumb angle here, in this case AC, so those two angles, um, that's, my, that's my cheek cut. I got my plumb cut, my alignment cut, and then that's, that's, the, that's the cut that goes against the hip. So that's the cut that goes here. So, so far so good, I'm gonna keep going with the net. Um, so looking at AC, so I've developed ACX. I'm going to go ahead and just keep going. So A, B, B, X, X, A. And so I'm going to, uh, looking at my, my net view here, I'm going to go ahead and arc um, the distance or the length of my top plate. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this length, A to B bring it over to my net, A, make an arc. So somewhere along this arc is gonna lie my B point. So looking at my net, I know I have my point, my, excuse me, my point X. So if I point, if I take the disc, the hip between X and B, I can then arc it as well and get point B here. So looking on my, my, my plant, my drawing, there's my elevation view of BX hip. I grab that distance, the actual length between X and B. And then arc that from X to my previous arc there. And then I've obtained my B point. So I'm going to have and connect B, A, B, X. And again, I've recreated um, that roof surface, the actual roof surface. There it is. A, B, X, A. So that's there, A, B, X, A on plan view. And again, you can go through the same motion of, of putting in uh, all your jack rafters 90 degrees 
to your top plate. And again, those, again, those alignment cuts are the angles and the real lengths of those rafters. So I'm going to continue going from B to D and then DX, creating this triangle. So B to D. Looking at my net, I'm going to arc. B. So again, somewhere along this arc is going to lie my uh, D. So I got to find out, I got my point X again. I'm looking at my net, so I'm going to arc X to D. So X, D. X to D somewhere here, there it is. And so then I've gained those two intersections, that would be my D. So I can go ahead and connect B to D. And then D to X. So it might be, uh, some people see this, this way of creating this view as, as being a little different or being, um, you know, maybe a little bit more complex and necessary, but what some people do in some other places is they'll just take, they'll recreate the net right on plan view. So they're gonna, they basically looking from those, like for example, DX to B, if you just marked DX up here and BX here, you can recreate that triangle that I just finished creating so that we can refold your, your triangle. And it, it, it makes the layout or the process very easy, but doing it this way, you're always going to get the results. The previous way of folding it out, like what some people do on plan view, works only when you have hips. The moment you have a valley, uh, the, the roof surfaces fold over one another. So that's why doing it this way, um, you'll always get the true net. You always get the actual surface. Uh, and, 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 and the ability to refold it. So I'm going to continue then looking um, from D to C. So create D, C, X roof surface. So I'm going to arc D to C. E to C somewhere, and then I will arc my uh, C to X hip, which I've already done in, in the very beginning. So C to X. There it is. So then there's my point C. So then I, I can, then again, I can reconnect C to X, C to D, recreating that surface area. There it is. So now I've just finished creating the actual net of this three-dimensional object. So what I can do now, and I'm gonna show you, I'll just cut this out and then fold it along the hips and we'll recreate this triangle. So uh, before I do, does anybody have uh, questions up to that point with the, the elevation, the plan, the, uh, and the net? Okay. All right. I'm just going to keep going then. Okay.
I just an exacto. So they when 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 we do the projects, um, like in the, especially in the online courses, the we like they'll ask the students to use a thicker piece of paper. Does it gives a bit more rigidity to it? Shouldn't you put your letters inside your triangle since you're in the process of cutting them off, or does it not matter in the end? You know what? That's a great idea. Yeah. C D. E, A, and C. Yeah, good idea for sure. And the, um, the reason why we do these net projects, um, you know, of course, for the, you can, there's a, you can see the, I hope we can see the practical side of it of getting, you know, actual surface areas and angles and all. But the, the real reason why we do that, why we do this is because you're, we're practicing how to visualize in your mind um, three dimensional objects and shapes. And so by doing this, um, you're forcing your brain to think. You're not, you're not relying on a computer or, or, or whatever uh, to, to do it for you. And one is substantially better than the other, in, in, and of course, in my opinion, but. Yeah. So there's my, my net. So I'm going to head, go ahead and fold it along the hips as best as I can. And uh, when you have thicker sheets, sometimes you can score it just a little bit with the knife and it makes folding it a lot easier. So any of you, any of you, any of you that know me, Samares, I uh, I was a roof cutter for the last 30, 40 years, and one of the things that I could not do was uh, draw anything out geometrically like this 40 years ago. And that's why I got into trigonometry. So I'm going to ask some other people whether or not they could ever come up with the hip lengths for this unequal sloped pyramid without using a uh, construction master or something. The only, only other way, there's two ways. You could either draw it out geometrically, just like Patrick did, did or use the law of signs. And 99% of the people are not even going to know what the law of signs is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's essentially what the construction master is doing. It's all trig. So either law of signs, cosines, tangent, you know, do it all by math, and then you end up with 10 pages of notes with numbers or you can end up with one page of geometry. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll just add to that, you know, like I get all fired up about it, but uh, one, one way, I mean, there's always a hundred ways of doing things and it doesn't mean that one way is better than the other or, 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 or something. Each, each, it's a tool, I mean, the way I see it, it's, it's a tool in your toolbox that, okay, in this specific case, I can use this and that works great and it's fast and it's effective, so, so why not? Um, but doing, doing these, practicing these things and practicing it, drawing it out manually with your hands, with a pencil, you, what you're really working is, is your mind. Um, and that is probably the most powerful thing you can work at. Probably the most, uh, that's the biggest moneymaker. I mean, really at the end of the day. Um, and there's all, there's been tons of studies and we're seeing more studies coming out every year through, you know, big, you know, accredited universities like Yale and Princeton and Harvard that are in, you know, there's they're, they're scientific data indicating and that you have to, do, being a human, we have to do the, these things manually. 
not, it's not a need, it's, well, it's, some might say it's an actual need, it's a necessity for humans to do things manually because it makes you feel good and like you're mastering something, you're a part of something and that sort of stuff. But um, they, there's, again, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that by doing things manually, whether taken by notes, you know, notes by hand, for example, you, you, you remember the information a lot better. It, it just kind of, it gets into your brain more when you, whereas when you type or when you use a, a, a mouse and you do it on, on AutoCAD, um, you don't retain the information nearly as well. So that's why doing this is important, in my opinion. So, so I'm just gonna go back, I'm gonna flip the camera back and I'll show you. So there's my net um, and I can fold that. And I'll just put a little piece of tape there to hold it. Patrick, it was fun to see how those plates, when you were folding it, landed right on top of each other. That, that, uh, so that the, it was saying that the plates were all gonna be at that same elevation when you were doing the folding, as you, as you were doing the folding. That, that was very cool to see. Okay, so you're, talk, you're, you're talking about when I did uh, the, the cutout, right? Well, when you were folding them, when you were folding the the little tri the, the little tetrahedron there, when oh, you were okay. folding it, those those plates l lined up. They they were right one right on top of each other, and so that's the, hitting that same neutral plane. Each of them right. was hitting that same neutral plane. Very right. cool. Exactly. Very cool. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that's where you can see the the the, the notion of the neutral plane. It's, it's equal for all elevations. Yeah. So. I'll just do the last little bit here with showing that pyramid. So there's my pyramid. Um, and whoever made that comment about making your, your uh, the, labeling the corners, that was a really good idea. So I can go ahead and line those up and you can see that my pyramid. So if I just zoom that over to top plan view, there's my pyramid and it is offset. It's not an, it's not an optical illusion. So if I, if I move my, you know, there's my point. So if I if I move, I'll hold my marker there. If I move that my piece, it will fall directly above this. So there's my because that's my point X. So there it is. Um, and so, uh, although what I've shown, what I've shown is fairly, I mean, I don't mean to simplify, but it is fairly simple. This, this task, this sheet, um, it gets interesting when you start getting into, uh, curved surfaces. So just give me two seconds and I'll show you what I mean by when we get into curves. This is awesome, Patrick. Thank you so much. Yeah, I feel like we should all give him a hand. I thought that was that was really great. I've unmuted you all so, so that you can all give, give Patrick a hand for a, a really wonderful presentation, Patrick. That, that was fantastic. Uh, yeah, we got a few minutes. We got a couple minutes. I'll just yeah, yeah. Please go. I, I don't think anybody. I think people would would rebel if I attempted cool. to stop yeah, you. Cool. So here's a, a model of curves, and. Um, what this is, is I'll just put it, I'll put it on plan view here. So I'll just throw the, um, the camera back down on plan view here. Yeah. So there is a, uh, um, a curved surface. So you have essentially bone that's been sectioned. So it's been cut here and here on an angle. It's, it gets distorted just because of the humidity, but it, so I, so I, have to, I just have to push a little bit of pressure on it, but there it is. So, so when I'm looking at my, my, my cone, you can see, uh, if I go like this, you can kind of see the shape of the cone as if this would continue up to a peak. And then with that cone, we can section it here and here. And then that gives you these kind of parabola looking uh, hips. 
And then, so that's, that's one example. Another example is something like this, where you have a cone, again, um, in this case, half a cone, uh, with these curved top plates. Hey. Slice here and here. So essentially, it's a cone. It's a, it's a round cone sitting on a square base. In this case, it's just the corner of it, but you get the premise. And so I'll show you. So we do these little models on a paper to get the note, like get the idea. And then I'll show you the actual model. So then um, here's the actual model. So again, you can see where you have that conical surface here, and then those slices of the cone once here and once there. And you can see that. So this, so this, these two go hand in hand. And so that's why it's important to do these, because you see the overall form and function, or overall form and how form interacts with one another to get the overall shape. And then we kind of zoom in and look at individual components. So we have these curved top plates. Uh, and then the, and in, and in this case, there's a curved purlin or three-dimensionally curved purlin. Yeah. And, it, and it, of course, it just doesn't end there. I mean, this stuff goes on for a long time. Um, and right, so right in front of me is, is one that I did a while ago, but it's, it's kind of the same premise. So here's a curved surface an OG surface, so there it is like that. So an OG roof uh, interacting with a flat roof. So you see that that's flat. And so that intersection gives you this kind of S-shaped um, hip. And so that's what that looks like. Um, and then later on, as we progress, you know, you, you can, you could start doing all kinds of just interesting things. You know, here's a, again, here's a cone and then on the surface of that cone is a, is a structural St. Andrew's cross, um, that's rotated into the root surface. So if I zoom in, you can see how the, the surface of that cross is, is on the root, on the root surface and it's square here. So that piece is square. And and just because just you can, and, and, and why not, is that these pieces are tapered. So you can see they're thicker here. And as you go up the surface of the cone, it, you know, it gets smaller. So Patrick, how do you cut that piece though? Well, the so piece. in this case, so th there's many ways of doing it, kind of, you know, a hundred ways to skin a cat, I guess. But in this specific case, it's a big block. So you have uh, just a big piece of timber, a big piece of wood, and out of that you cut these three-dimensional curved surfaces. And Does anybody have ever steam something like that or, or do any of those methods or this is too big to steam? Well, so this would be, I mean, in this little model, you could probably steam it, but in real life, because this, 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 there is real life examples of this, it's, it's like an eight by eight or a 10 by 10. You don't, it's, I don't know of anyone steaming an eight by eight yet out of oak. Um, so you can glue laminated it. So you have two kind of, uh, you know, jigs to get your two curved surfaces that's required, or you have a big block of timber that out of that big block, you carve out quite precisely um, your curves. Uh, and doing, doing the curved stuff like this hip and what I've showed previously is kind of what's, what's, is how stone carvers use stereotomy. So stone carvers will have a big block of, of stone out of that stone, then they'll cut out and carve away certain surfaces. So you would see that like in a, in a vault, uh, a barrel vault or something or, uh, yeah. So that's, that's how we get these little, that's how we get these curved pieces. Hey, uh, uh, Patrick, can you explain to me what happens when the, the neutral line quits being neutral? And, um, you know, so you like might, if the top plate was not level? If the new, well, the neutral line, just to get, just to let you know, the neutral, the rule of thumb, neutral line is always level. 
Right, I, I get it. But I, I, what I'm, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, if you have a purposely sloped top plate that these Raptors are landing on, so you would, like. you would still develop a neutral line, but then off of that neutral line, you would develop your sloped uh, top plate. Yeah. Uh, I'm just looking, I'm looking around here because I got some models. I might have a sloping, I got a sloping ridge model I can show. Yeah, I mean, I'll take anything I get. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I've always known the, the neutral line is the gutter line or the eave line. Um, just different terminology for the same thing. Right, and and uh, and I think, and I would agree with that. So the gutter line is what what a lot of people would see it as, but uh, yeah, it's just new. I don't know. I mean, that's I just I just made that up. Really, I, I mean, I didn't make anything up. I didn't invent anything. I'm just re, you know, I'm just passing off what I've been taught. So uh, the the French they have a little N, um, so I just thought uh oh, N for neutral. So I just kind of said okay, neutral. So it's a neutral plane because it's a neutral surface. It's neutral for all pieces. But anyways, there is a, a sloping top plate or a, a ridge excuse me so there's there's my uh model on plan view so you can see my top plates uh are not parallel with my ridge on plan view um and, and when that happens if that ever happens uh the way you can accommodate it to still keep a flat roof you can see how that's flat is by having a sloping ridge a sloping top plate or both but that's one way of a, to, to accommodate that. And so you would still like to go back to what you're saying about the neutral plane, you would still develop an elevation view of, the, of, of this ridge based off of this as a neutral line to get you that kind of that pitch. So would I then be looking for another triangle underneath the top plate? Underneath this? Underneath yeah, like, like let's say your right hand was dropped three inches below your, you know. Right, correct. And then what, I a second what? story to a first story. And so you're, and so like as if you had an overhanger or something? Yeah, I guess. I'm kind of playing around. I'll be quiet now. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's all good. It's just, you, the neutral plane is, it, it doesn't always have to represent a top plane. A neutral plane could be anything. It could be anywhere along the height, a vertical height of your pieces. So if your, your top plate or the top of your top plate can be below that neutral line or above it. I don't know if that helps. Okay, cool. Yeah, for sure. That's okay. Well, you might think of it as if the, the, top, the top piece that you show there, the ridge, if you level that out, then these side pieces would be inclined and maybe that might be the idea of the sloping uh, top plate. Right, exactly. And that's what I'm saying, yeah. So you can, you can accommodate. The, the problem arises when, you, when your top plate and ridge are not parallel on plan view. That's when you, have, that's when you know, okay, I have a slope. If you want a flat roof surface, if you want this roof surface to be flat, you have to accommodate it by having a sloping top plate, uh, a sloping ridge or a sloping top plate. Yeah. If not, if you just put them both of them horizontal, then you're, you have like a twisting roof surface, which is cool too. It's whatever, you know. From a practical standpoint, um, in, in the real world of timber framing, would you work off a scale model or would you scale this up to life, life size if you're doing something complex or how, how, do you, how do we actually apply it in the field? Yeah, so yeah, that's, of course, that's the question everybody wants. How do, how do I do this? So th there's, there's many ways of doing the, the drawing that I just showed. Um, when you, when you do a live tip, like doing a real timber frame, certainly you want a full size layout. So if, the, if you have the space available to you, so you would, you would lay it out full scale. The other, there's other ways of, dra of drawing, there's other methods of drafting. So what I've shown is a very basic, very basic kind of grasping of it, but there's uh, like what they call a bevel method of drafting or drawing. There's the, what the French call it, I don't know what the English translation is, uh, and then there's a combination of those sauterelle and rembarquement. And there's, so there's adding your models, just a bunch of different techniques. And so depending, just a tool in your toolbox, depending what, uh, what, what you have at your disposal, what, how much room you have, your tools at hand, uh, you would use different, different drawing techniques. So I like using a combination of what you, you have done for the angles 
and what Sim was talking about with the with the trig for lengths. So we we like to use a combination of uh, trig for lengths and the drafting for any angle you need for layout. Yeah. So that's I mean again that's that's certainly a way of, a way of doing it that's successful. Another way it, it, that so you can do you could have a reduced scale drawing. Try to try to mi essentially minimize how much you have to reduce it. So you can have a scale drawing of half, one fifth, one fourth, something like that. So at least your chances of error are being reduced. But an another thing, let's say if you're doing, you're actually laying out a full on, like a full size hip, what you can do is lay out, let's say the tail end of the hip, for example, or maybe the top end of the hip, you know, when it comes to the king post or something, you lay that out, you cut it at the shop, you lay out the bottom section, so your overhang, the tail end or whatever, and then you wait till you get on site. And then you just take your final measurement when, you, when your trusses are up and you have more, more accuracy. So you take your actual length of the measurement with your tape measure, you apply that to your piece, and then you just take your angles that are on your piece of wood. That's, an, that's another way. Of course, even if you are going to use trigonometry, it helps to know what you're doing trig on. Like with this layout, it would be very easy to do the, the actual trig because you've got everything right in front of you. And you just need to measure angles. So I, I would agree, but I think I'd have a hard time agreeing when you start <laughs> doing curves. Like if I, if I wanted to do this cross using trig, I think that would be pretty challenging. For most people, it, it would be curves. for me also. And along that curved conical surface, you're you're having this timber. So again, it's a I think a tool in your toolbox. But I, it's again just my my opinion of, of it is that if 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 we're focusing in on trig and a framing square, we are limiting ourselves. And so we will never be. Able, I can take that with a grain of salt, but it will be very unlikely that people will then be able to produce these things using trig in the framing square. So, so one, one way is an avenue where your imagination is limitless. And that's the limiting factor. And I think you don't have to necessarily master it, but that is a pretty cool way to go. Then, then you, regardless of its form, regardless of how, I want a piece that's curved and or three dimensionally curved. Uh, this this drawing it out will always work, and you can visualize it in your mind. And yeah, Patrick, what I heard you talking about earlier with the Yale studies and such is really this is kinesthetic learning to do kinesthetic work. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a reason. I mean, there's a like uh, you. If anyone's familiar with UNESCO, so UNESCO is uh, it's a, an organization through the United Nations. I think most people have heard of. Uh, they classify this knowledge uh, because of the importance it played on on human human civilization. Without without stereotomy, without our having this ability, we wouldn't have never been able to create the. The, you know, the Gothic cathedrals and the vaults and the stonework that we see, but also uh, these models. And so there is a, a, a massive, and again, just my opinion, there's a massive importance to learn this. And I think most people who get into the trade are hands-on visual learners. They, it's hard, you know, it's like you're trying to, I don't know, we're going to have an exam and, and the exam is to climb a tree and you have a fish. It's just sometimes it doesn't, it, doesn't mean the fish is dumb. The fish is pretty good and it's swimming in the in water, but the monkey would be pretty good climbing the tree, you know? So it's kind of that, I guess, that idea that th this stuff is, is hands-on visual learners for hands-on, you know, for, for people who are in the trade. Uh, and again, I'm not trying to minimize anything, but the, the trig and the math, it's all good, but it, it won't lend itself to those learners. Patrick? Um. I think you said you have a course or a school or something. How about yeah. a shameless plug? Excuse me, how much of what? Yeah, it said, you, you said earlier you have a school or online courses where you do this stuff. Do you want to give a shameless plug for what it is, your school or your course? Uh, so what's a, what's a shameless plug? I didn't shameless plug. 
What's that? A commercial. Do you want to give us a commercial right now? <laughs> <for your> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm not a salesman. I mean, yeah. Uh, well, we learn this stuff. Come learn it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I mean, to, uh, all kidding aside, uh, yeah, I've, I've developed online courses for anyone who wants to learn online. Um, it's it's not per like nothing's perfect. It's it's got its pros and its cons. I mean, uh, like any any online course would. Uh, the the some of the the and I'll just go straight forward. I mean, some of the the cons of of the online courses specifically is you got to be really self motivated. You have to be really self. You know, discipline and, and set your time aside to, to do it and because you don't have people around you doing it and I don't hassle my students I don't I'm not after anyone uh, people people sign up because they want to learn so then then let's do it you know and I'm all good for it but the good side of the, of the online stuff is that if you're a real goal-getter and you're like an entrepreneur and and you and you're hungry for it yeah and that's the best way to go because no one's holding you back oh you you it's all you so so that's one of the good things uh, so the other thing that we do, I do offer courses here. So you can see a bit of a background in me, but this is, this is my whiteboard here at the little school. And I have, I'm able to accommodate five students and every student, so I can just swing this around, but every one student gets one of these workbenches. You can kind of see it. Um, the uh, name of the school, Mike, is uh, Professional School of Practical Stereotomy. Where are you located, Patrick? Uh, in Ottawa, Ottawa, Canada, the capital of Canada. We we won't be visiting that from the south of the border any time yeah, so, uh, <laughs> for this next well, month or so, at yeah, least. Online, and it's an option. Uh, now, now, uh, Patrick, uh, you were going to uh, perhaps give us a second presentation. This is Matt Max speaking. You can give us a second presentation. Would you would you give the the folks just the the brief you know thumbnail of what that will be a synopsis really? of what yeah, that will be for yeah. and, and we'll probably be doing it next week if it's um, if it's convenient for you, Patrick. Yeah, I mean uh, I'd have to look, but yeah, we could we could certainly organize another one of these. I'm just looking at my yeah, we could certainly organize something else. Um, because you were going to look at the backing angles and the offset. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, when when you're looking at the I'm just going to grab a little model just to give people. So one of uh, one of the one of the well, actually the first model that we any one of us who who start this does is is this little model. So people who are familiar with the courses, you know, very familiar with this model. Um, and it's basically just a little hip, a little hip and king post. So the next, the, the next presentation that I would propose is to look at how do we solve for um, the backing angles of the hip. So that's these angles here. Um, and the, the idea of having it straight. So that means you can see how it, the, the peak of that hip isn't actually centered in the material. Um, and the, there's, a, there's, there's an advantage to that. Um, and what that does is that it gives you this depth. So the depth between the back, where the backing angle touches the face of your hip. So this depth is the same as that depth. So again, where that backing angle touches the face of your hip. So that and that are the same um, on an irregular hip. So we look, so the next presentation is we look at the backing angles. How do we solve to get these angles? And how do you uh, offset it or or we call it straying. How do you stray the hip? Okay. And the key for that is for your uh, your overhangs, your fascia, your fascia and uh, soffit, so they're all equal, right? That's right. So you, you the, the fascia would be the same. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Patrick, you said you're not a, a salesman, so I'll be a salesman for you. Yeah, I bet, hey, sure do it. Yeah, it's even better. Uh, I, I completed, I don't know how many folks are, are sitting in, but uh, I completed Patrick's stage one, and uh, I've got one, one project left to finish stage two, and it has been worth every second I have spent on it. You know, most of my roof framing curriculum is mathematical-based, um, and this, this has been just an awesome experience to learn the visualization and being, being an instructor, 
um, having other tools in the toolbox, like Patrick said, for my more visual learners that aren't grasping it mathematically. Um, you know, we've, we've always done a mix of visual, especially when it came to unequal pitch hip ropes, where we draw that roof kernel, uh, but simply to get a unit rafter length for that unknown mixed pitch hip. Um, but this has just been an incredible experience. I, I highly recommend everybody take these courses with Patrick. Oh, that's great. That's great. Cool. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, I, 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 I do want to mention that Patrick had uh, suggested that we look to create a little bit of, um, of um, contribution from the folks taking the class. Um, and the original suggestion was to create a bit of a contribution for the guild. But I think what we'll do is we'll put up a little button on the, um, the guild's website and um, we'll mark it as a contribution donation for the, to the practical, to the, uh, practic the professional school of practical stereotomy, okay? And so no pressure. You can still come. You don't have to pay. But if you do have, if you would like to, um, to uh, donate something to the school, we're going to make that possible for you on the, the website. And whatever we collect, we'll pass along, we'll thank pass you. along to uh, Patrick. So well, thank you very much. That's, that's very generous. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll just add just, just for, yeah, we could sign off here. But I just want to add to what Pat was saying there. Um, learning it this, learning it in this fashion, uh, it, yeah, people, it's a visual learning, right? So people grasp it really quickly. Um, and and you, it's, it's phenomenal to see what a 15 year old can produce. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm being sincere about it. So to give you an example, this model was an 18 year old. And because they've, they've kind of supposedly, you know, take it with a grain of salt, but mastered everything else that's straight and linear. So there's something about that. That's it. Well, I think you were right, Patrick, when you said st st people learn different ways and, and you're teaching uh, one way that, that many, many people and need to, you know, that, that's, that's the way they would learn. Right. That's the way they would learn, the way that you're showing. Right. Okay. Well, All right. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody. We've uh, broken the record again tonight. We had up to 71 participants here. Awesome. So, so awesome. Patrick, uh, yeah. Patrick, uh, I, I think it was very, very well received, and we're really happy that uh, you. that you uh, that you did this for us tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you for you. Yeah, this is okay. wonderful. Thank you very much for everyone coming out. Okay, and and we'll see everybody. Uh, we'll hopefully we'll see everybody next week. You'll see it in the weekly guild notes um, as well. Okay. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye. Bye.